But first, we got to talk about some important economic data that came out this morning. Continuing spending on the part of the U.S., amidst continuing inflation here. And if you look at the core PCE price index, that's personal consumption uh, expenditures, uh, and the month-over-month -month deflator figure, that uh, rose by a, a fifth, uh, half of 1%, excuse me, uh, versus the four-tenths of 1% that was estimated by analysts. If you look at the year-over-year -year figure, it was 4.7%. The headline number coming in at the highest since 1982. So this is the November number, by the way. So yet another measure of inflation running hot. Why do we pay attention to PCE in particular? As a reminder, it is the number that the Fed tracks most closely. At the same time, though, spending held up, uh, spending up 0.6%. It is a bit of a slowdown from the one point, revised 1.4% again in spending that we saw in October. But nonetheless, in the face of these higher prices, we are still seeing seeing some pace here to spending incomes, by the way, up four tenths of 1%. So it's sort of a confirmation here, Saz, of the picture and the data we were already seeing. Oh, by the way, forgot to mention jobless claims. It's a busy morning for data. 205,000 initial jobless claims being filed last week, Saz. Yeah, there's a, clearly a lot going on. Slow holidays. Uh, this is not, Julie. But I, I understand the headline that uh, it's going to get a lot of clicks, so people are going to roll with it, that consumer spending uh, did, in fact, slow down. But I think the bigger story here is the continued not decline plunge in the savings rate uh, among consumers in this country. In April this year, the personal savings rate was 12.6%. Uh, according to the data or the report out this morning, that went down to 6.9%. So clearly, uh, this holiday season, people have been out there shopping, perhaps shopping a lot more than is reflected in a lot of retail stocks. You know, I was just trolling uh, Yahoo Finance plush charts this morning. I look at Macy's, I look at Dick's Sporting Goods, I look at the retail uh, ETF, that's the RTH. I mean, all of these asset classes have been pretty much lower uh, since Black Friday. And you, again, you know, you look at this work down in the savings rate and you get the sense that despite everything going on in the world, all these concerns, uh, a lot of retailers may be sitting on better than expected holiday seasons. Yeah, and, and let me just mention as well, as we're talking about this better than expected holiday season, potentially, and this demand from consumers, all of those warnings at the beginning of the holiday season that you weren't going to get your stuff mostly seem to have been overblown. There seem to have been, according to various reports, a combination of factors that helped is that, first of all, people listened and many people did shop early, but also retailers prepared. You know, we've been hearing that from some retailers that they took extra measures to get things on time. We also, of course, have seen the shipping companies really step it up in terms of hiring and trying to get things to people in a timely manner. So people were able to spend and, and able to get the stuff that they wanted, it seems, in time for the holidays. Us. Yeah, no delays for me. I've gotten all my packages on time. Very, very excited about that. But I think the next catalyst here, usually in the first two weeks of January, you see a lot of retailers come out, offer pre-announcements on holidays, how their holiday sales, uh, in fact, went mid-January. Also, as of right now, the big National Retail Federation Conference kicks off. There are some heavy hitters there. Target CEO Brian Cornell is getting an award. So I wouldn't be shocked to see some positive pre-announcements from that space very, very soon.